most vibrant cities. A festival of a million kites fills the sky. As one kite soars and duels above, one family must confront their fractured past. Hi, I'm Prashant Pargav. I'm the writer and director of Patan. Uh, I grew up on the south side of Chicago, and my parents are both from India. So when I came out of college and I started doing motion design work, which is a lot of layer typography and um, images, and I did a lot of work for HBO, Was had a great kind of commercial career doing that, art directing these um, trailers and different things. And having that commercial career, I just felt that I wasn't able to share my personal vision or my personal voice. And just slowly over time, I wanted to tell more and more of my own stories. I went to the actor's studio, completely dropped working on a computer, did theatrical directing, started working with actors, and found that process really exhilarating. And I made a short film that did well at Sundance called Sangha. And uh, from there, just embarked on this journey. Uh, I knew that I was going to make a feature film prior to even arriving there. Um, the film takes place in Ahmedabad, which is not where my parents are from. It's just simply known as the capital of where people fly kites. Patang is a seven-year journey for me, and I began the film by doing three years of research. The film takes place in Ahmedabad during a kite festival where they coat the string with ground glass and try to cut each other's kites. Uh, so I had a story that uh, was inspired by the way that my uncles would fly kites. When you fly a kite, you stare up at the sun and you forget all those things that are happening around you, your thoughts and doubts and what's happened before or after. And regardless of who you are, you stare up at the sun with such wonder. So I thought it was a beautiful metaphor. I really wanted to create a story that did not objectify the people there, but really captured their pride and... Um, so I began by doing three years of research, very much in a documentary kind of journalist point of view, where I would go there one to three months every year, live with uh, the community, gossip with grandmothers, uh, interview kite makers, chase kites as they're cut with the kids on the street. By the third year, I was able to find the scenes in the film and let them unfold naturally. Um, people were just living out what was occurring in the script. And I would be able to hold a camera very close to someone, and because of my history there of returning year after year, they would just feel very comfortable and um, generous in sharing who they were. And it was that foundation of the process of observation and really finding that beauty amongst what happens every day formed the foundation of the way that we actually made the film. We had a, a couple of amazing people that worked with us on the back end of the film. Uh, the first people that we got in touch with were uh, Dig It Audio with Tom Eppinger and Abigail Savage. And they've done Half Nelson, Man Push Cart, Inside Job, and a number of naturalistic films. And that was just, you know, through, through the network getting to them. And I felt this was a perfect fit. Uh, and they really were able to leverage the natural landscape of all the sounds. And... Prior to beginning, they recommended that I work with Joe Klotz. They just felt our demeanor would really click. And then it turned out that the producer from my first short film was the executive producer of Precious. So she also know him, knew him. And then we also had Mario Grigorov, our composer, who was, um, who, who's done Precious and a num number of other great films. So it's just this thing that happened, you know, naturally through knowing someone, knowing someone else, and it all came together. But it was those three people that I, I just had a tremendous time with on the on the end part of the film because it was, they did what they did better than I ever could do myself, and they were able to take it to a whole nother level. When people ask me why do you make films, I think they're things that happen in our life, um, and when you're able to just dive into something and express all of that angst or joys or struggles that you have, 
in a in a field that requires you to wear so many hats and and it's a collaborative field and and an immersive field with so many others i mean it's just it's just where i feel most comfortable and most happy i would say if i were thinking about three things that a filmmaker who's doing their first feature could do uh the first thing i would say is just don't wait go do it um don't search for validation from everyone around you or getting into this contest or securing this funding. Just look at it as a process that I want to make the best film possible and dive into it completely. Another thing that I would say is that throughout your process of making a film, not everyone has to like you. You know, you, you have to point to that story with all your might, with all your heart, and move towards that. But along the way, you're going to have to fire people, hire people, and do all of these things and, and find, you know, uncommon ways to get something done. And so you don't have to be someone who's liked. You have to be someone who's respected and whose story is, um, is championed by those around you. And um, the other, the last thing, I mean, is... is um, Build your audience from the start, meaning if you are making a horror genre film, start to cultivate that audience. Um, whatever blogs are out there that, that kind of appeal to you, start interacting with them. Start putting out your view on life, uh, your sensibility, because the way that you put two th things next to each other, that's what makes you you. But you should be able to cultivate those two audiences or those ten audiences from the start. And whether that's through a Twitter or account or your Facebook or, or getting out there and meeting lots of people, getting immersed in the community, magical things happen in unexpected ways. But if you're isolated and trying to do something in your, in your room without getting out there, it becomes much more difficult. But ultimately, it's a calling. It's just an addiction. I mean, when you make films, it's, it's what you love and where you feel most alive. Bethung is playing in Boulder this weekend. Please go see it. There's a line in the film, we don't hold on to our past with sadness. We hold on to our little, little happiness. And for me, uh, I truly believe that you'll walk out the theater a little bit happier. Um, and our website is www.patang.tv. And we have a Facebook site. Please let your friends know, and thank you so much.